this week I'm painting this lovely King Charles Spaniel. I found this image on Pixabay, so that's going to be the main reference. And this video is going to be a little bit different to my step-by-step -step tutorials. It took quite a while to film this and to paint it, so instead of narrating every bit, I'm going to do a bit of an introduction and a summary at the end, and I'm going to leave most of this just with no interruption so you can watch this painting come together. I wanted to try out something a bit different this time, so after I did my sketch, I turned the paper over and I used my clean water to wet the back of the paper first. Then I turned it over and secured it with some masking tape just to hold it down, and then I applied water to the front side as well. When I've applied water previously, I've always just added it to the front, to the area that I wanted to paint. And what I found is I've ended up with a lot of surface water, which has made it quite difficult to control the paint and the paints ended up being quite dilute. So I wanted to find a way of really soaking the paper all the way through to try and keep it wet for longer. I've also used a little bit of paper towel there just to dab off some excess water around the, the face of the dog itself to remove some of those puddles so that it's a bit easier to control the paint. I'll list the colours and the equipment I used in the description box below, but the main colours that I used for this were burnt sienna, French ultramarine, quinacridone rose, some Hansa yellow light, Van Dyke brown and some yellow ochre. It doesn't really matter if you don't have those exact colours, you can substitute them for something similar or you can mix up your own. The colours themselves aren't really the most important part of this. Um, the burnt sienna I would say is the one I used the most, so that was probably my most important colour choice. I mixed that with some of the others to create different tones of brown. The Van Dyke Brown is a really nice dark colour, but if you didn't have that for your shadow details, you could mix some French Ultramarine with Burnt Sienna, that can create a really nice dark brown or black. Um, the red and the blue, it's up to you, you don't have to use the same ones that I used. I've been using the Quinacridone Rose because I got a new Daniel Smith watercolour set and quinacridone rose was part of that and it's just become my go-to red at the moment but another pinky red would do nicely um, i mainly used it to either mix in with the brown to create a nice red brown tone or i mixed it with a french ultramarine for some purple for the shadow details on the white areas french ultramarine is the main blue that i tend to use but another one would do just as well and Hansa Yellow Light worked nicely because it was a nice cool yellow, but Lemon Yellow might work instead. Uh, yellow Ochre, you could probably do this without. You don't really need to substitute for it either. I used it because it was there, but it wasn't really a, a huge part of this, so that one could be removed altogether. And what I've started out doing here is just putting in an initial wash of really light colours and that's going to act as a bit of a guide so that I know where each section is and I can build up different layers on top of that. And for the rest of this painting that's pretty much what I do, I just work by adding extra layers just one at a time over the top of what I've already done, just building this up and adding a bit more depth each time. I tended to work from left to right, there were some exceptions to this, but usually I'd start at the left paw, moving on to the ear, the face, then the right ear and the right paw. And by doing that I felt like I had a little bit more control over the paint, it was a bit easier for me to break it down into sections rather than trying to do the whole thing wet in wet, I just felt like the paint itself was easier to control. Also, because a, a bit of time had passed between adding the paint to a section and then coming back to that section later, it meant that that initial wash had had chance to dry a little bit and it was easier to add extra layers of paint on top of that. I use clean water as I go along just to soften the edges of the paint that I'm adding so everything seems more blended together and you don't end up with those harsh lines. And to be honest, the rest of this is just a case of being patient, working over a bit at a time, going step by step, adding layer upon layer. It was a really nice, relaxing way of painting, actually. Um, but there isn't that much for me to narrate now because it is just kind of going over what I've done before. Every time I add an extra layer, I'm trying to refine it a little more. I'm getting more detailed as I go, starting out with bigger shapes to begin with and then refining it as I get closer to the finish. I left the nose and the eyes to the end. I like doing that sometimes because I feel like it brings the picture together once you're done, just to put in the eyes as a finishing touch. 
And you'll notice with the layers that I'm adding, particularly in the beginning, they're quite transparent. So there's more water in this paint mixture and it's not particularly thick to begin with. I found that that helped me to create subtle variations between the paint. I didn't add in really dark paint until slightly later on and then I softened that with water. So everything was just being built up really gradually rather than doing it all at once. So I think that's probably enough talking from me for now. So I'll let you watch the rest of this pretty much uninterrupted till the end. I'll do a bit of a summary at the end of the painting. I'll also show you another version of this spaniel that I painted using a different medium last week. Um, sometimes when I do pet portraits, in fact, most of the time when I do pet portraits, I use water mixable oil paints. Um, so this is actually a bit different to me to do it in watercolour and I painted this spaniel last week using water mixable oils so I'll show you both paintings side by side towards the end so we can have a bit of a compare of the two. I thought it'd be interesting just to see how different they turned out and to have a look at what they look like in different mediums so I'll put that on at the end but for now I will let you watch the rest of this video uninterrupted. <laughs>
So we're now almost finished with this painting and I decided to try and ground the spaniel into the background a little bit by adding a bit of shadow detail underneath the face and the paws. I added some water to the paper and then a few darker shadow tones, some purples and some browns just underneath. It spread down in the water and added a nice gradient. Initially I had planned to add more of a background to this but because it took me a while and I was quite happy with what it looked like I didn't add more of a background in case I ruined it but the plan had been to have some colour at the top half of the painting as well. The spaniel has some really light areas of fur on top of its head and on top of its ears and they just kind of blend out into the background this way. If I added a darker colour you might be able to see more of that detail so I think if I was going to do this again I might add a bit more colour around the top of the spaniel but I think it works either way. I'm quite happy with how it turned out. It looks much more simple this way and quite subtle. As with a lot of first attempts at painting in a different way, there are definitely things I would change about this, but overall I'm really happy with it. I liked working in layers, I felt like it gave me much more control, I felt like I could add detail a bit at a time, and it was really fun working step by step. I think one of the biggest things I liked about doing this layer by layer is that it gives you a bit more time to think. Sometimes I feel a bit overwhelmed with wet and wet painting because you have to make really quick decisions. It's difficult to control the paint sometimes and you have to know what you're doing before you get going with it because it gets out of control really quickly, I've found. Or maybe that's just me. Maybe that will get better with practice. Um, but doing this by layers just meant that I had time to plan what colours I wanted to use and I felt much more in control of the paint, which is unusual with watercolour. <laughs> Normally it does its own thing but I think that's probably one of the things I like the most about these layers. I think if I were gonna do it again I might have longer breaks in between each stage, have a break, walk away and come back to it again. By trying to do this all in one go I was definitely feeling a bit tired towards the end of it and maybe I rushed a few areas instead of taking the time needed. Um, but by working in layers, you do have that opportunity if you want to. You can take a step back, you can have a break from it, and then you can come back later. I guess I could have always re-wet the surface if I needed to. So this is the end result, this lovely King Charles Spaniel puppy. And coming up is the water mixable oil version that I did last week. So you can see the difference there, I'll put them side by side. It's interesting to see how different an image can look coming from the same reference material. I think the watercolour is definitely lighter, but that's probably a bit more true to the reference image than the oil painting sketch was. Um, if you have a favourite, let me know in the description box below. Thank you so much for watching. I will be back again next Wednesday with another tutorial.